So Mike and I aren't really sure what to expect from tonight because mm. I got a text from Barry saying he was kind of lonely and Mike got a text from Ben saying we're having cannelloni. Yeah, that's, that's Barry's spelling. <laughs> <laughs> Staying in is the new going out, but only if you've got great food and your mates with you. Unfortunately, we don't have any other friends, but the food is incredible. In each of these episodes, two of us cook up something awesome to share and to kickstart our big night in. When they invited us to have dinner, I was expecting a bit more than a bit of spinach and I don't know. tomato. A lot more. What we've also got Ooh. is a vegetarian cannelloni. I don't really like wine. Yep, yeah. <laughs> I'll have a Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Shall I try and dig in? I've got a funny feeling it's going to be really spicy. I'm tingling all over. <laughs> and I can't wait for this. <laughs> and they're filled with a roasted vegetable and ricotta filling. For your filling, chop up some pepper, aubergine and courgette into about thumb sized pieces, stick into a baking tray, cover in oil, season well and bung it in an oven for half an hour at 200 degrees and turn it every 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have done a good job with this. Oh, there's that chilli. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a kick to it, hasn't oh, it? No. Oh. Nice. And to finish off our filling, we're adding pecorino and ricotta to our roasted vegetables to blend it up. Blend it up. It goes into a piping bag, and that way it's really easy to get inside of our pasta tubes. And is pecorino one of those hard Italian cheeses that is vegetarian, unlike parmesan? Mm, correct, okay. yeah. And then all of that sits on top of our tomato sauce. The tomato sauce that sits at the base of our dish isn't just any ordinary tomato sauce. We pack it full of veg. We've got celery, red onion, carrot, garlic and chilli all fried off in a pan with some oil until it's softened. Then add in a tin of tomatoes and some dried oregano. Be careful with the carrot in the tomato. Tomato sauce almost done. Basil, can you get some basil? Got it. So it is all about multitasking for this one as well. Okay. Three main things. Your field pasta, your tomato sauce, and a white sauce, which we haven't tackled yet. Red sauce done, now time for the... White sauce. It's all about multitasking. So we're gonna take butter, melt it in a pan, add in plain flour until you've got a paste, dribble in milk a little bit at a time to make a roux, and eventually a nice sauce. We're also adding the flavors of dried bay leaves and nutmeg, grated. I really like this, I'm having more. Always a good sign when people go back for seconds. Oh, it's banging. Have you ever had cannelloni like this before? Never. Not served vertically. I, I love it. I think I've had it served horizontally. Lazy down. <laughs> yeah. Lazy cannelloni. It's a centrepiece, isn't it? To construct our dish, we're doing it a bit different. Traditionally, cannellini would be filled and then laid flat and covered in sauce. We're standing ours up in our tomato sauce. Oh, how much pasta do you need? Um, well, this is obviously for four of us, so we're going for a just less than 400 grams. Actually, we had a question from Hannah asking, how, do, how much pasta per person, how do you measure how much pasta you need? Because I've got this thing, which I use for linguine or spaghetti, spaghetti. to measure one dose, two dose, three dose, or four doses. That's pretty accurate. And, and, and actually, as it turns out, it's very similar with dry pasta by weight. You could just do 100 Ooh. grams, 200 grams, 300 grams, 400 grams, different portions. Basically 80 to 100 grams ah. of dried pasta per person. If it's fresh pasta, add on 50%. This makes your life easier. Fill up a piping bag with your ricotta and roasted veg mix, and then half fill all of those stood up tubes. That is incredible. To finish off this dish, Dribble over your white sauce. Oh my goodness. And then plenty of grated pecorino. It goes into an oven, 180 degrees Celsius for half an hour. I'll take my hat off. That is exceptional. Top tip, grab yourself a tray of steam or a tray of water, which will become <laughs> steam, and put it in the bottom of the oven. Because <laughs> that will just stop these top edges from burning. You want them to go crispy and golden and brown but it will just stop them burning if there's enough steam in the oven just oh, to mm, help cook awkward. the bits that aren't in liquid. And the great thing with this dish, it sits in the oven for half an hour, you don't have to worry about it. Most of the work comes right at the start. Well, I am impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. If I were a member of the opposite sex and I had been cooked this on a date, then I would also be impressed. Mm. I'd be right. doubly impressed. Do how, how Which leads me on to this question. <laughs> right. So I've got a question from Daniel, and he says, you're making a dinner to impress a lady on a date. Mm. What do you cook? I cooked my wife a steak. 
mm -hmm. whilst we were going out. Mm -hmm. Strong, bold. Well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you know it's it's like it's a statement, isn't it? A steak. Yeah. It's like pow. I want steak. Me. A steak. Uh, I'm a steak with, man. With, I'm, I'm a steak, steak, steak man. I always resort back to the same thing, which is perhaps boring if I keep doing it, but it's always for different people, so it's fine. Um, oh, risotto. That's sad, isn't it? A risotto. <laughs> <laughs> when you pull up in the cab outside your house, do you turn to your date and say, do you want to come in for risotto? <laughs> Quite stodgy. Don't, who needs coffee or DVD when you've got risotto? Mm -hmm. No, I like it. It's simple. It's one pot. Each one is very different, and it's mm -hmm. quick. So you're not spending all the time slaving away. It's just it's done. Yeah. You enjoy it. It's light. You enjoy it. You move on. Move on to the next risotto. Mike, now obviously you're going to have to use your imagination because yeah. the whole dating thing not really happened for you yet. But what would you consider? It's a long line. You know, it's tough to get through all these girls <coughs> lining up. I have never cooked for a date. Wait, I've got my violin somewhere. No, no, I don't find it sad because normally I just take them to a champagne bar and spend money, a hundred quid, on uh, on a date after so they're passing. So your the perfect meal is evening. alcohol. Yeah, Jaeger bombs. <laughs> <laughs> Barry. All right. So getting the girl never been a massive problem. It's keeping them. Oh, okay. Right. Look so therefore, you. therefore, <laughs> impressing them the first night doesn't matter. That's easy. That's easy. Got all this going on. That's fine. <laughs> what you need is. Oh, you amazing, amazing eggs in the morning. To make up for the night before. In his case, a little bit of that, yeah. <laughs> and they'll stay with you forever. Good question, good good answers, good answers. Um, but I mean, it was either that question or which one of you is the most well endowed? So you've got four holes, four sizes, and it all depends on the person. 